Hi folks, this is so exciting. It is machining, it is Arduino, it is a useful tool. We love making our YouTube videos, we love running our job shop. We often find the need to convert millimeters to inch and inch to millimeters. Let's build a specific hardware device that does that super well for the shop. Welcome to another Wednesday widget. To get started, we've got our work coordinate system smack dab at the top center of our workpiece using the Heimer to do that. I really wanted a good GoPro angle and it ends up the trick was a 246 block plus two magnetic dial indicator blocks to get that GoPro mounted up there. We'll see if it works. Starting off with our favorite tool, the shear hog. So one of the things I noticed is that you're starting to see a burr get rolled up on the edge. That might mean this shear hog insert is toward the end of its life or it has a chip on it. I'll tell you, these things last so long and I don't even worry too much if it's just raising that burr there because it's a roughing tool. However, it's worth noting that as a tool wears or as it gets chips on it, it may require more horsepower, which means if you're running that tool close to the limit, you could start to see some problems or what I like to call now process reliability. Something I didn't used to care about as much or be as conscious of, but now I really, uh, really care running the shop. It's a 3D adaptive tool path. It's going to remove the bulk of the material. Our typical recipe, 4,000 RPMs, 55 inches a minute. And I can tell you what that is in millimeters because I've got a box to do that, about 1,400 millimeters per minute. The feed per tooth is just shy of 14 thou, which is about 0.35 millimeters per tooth. I love this box. In fact, I've had it on my desk for a few months now, and it's one of the reasons why we've been more easily and more quickly able to add some of the metric dimensions. It's just so much fun. Quarter inch optimal load and a 0.2 inch roughing step down. We're holding the part with our talon grips and that lets us use just a really small amount at the bottom of our part and we're able to walk all the way around it. I have been machining now for just about 10 years and this is the first time, at least I can remember, that the power went out. We lost power. Luckily, no harm done. We did have to restart. So I right click, duplicate. That created this second 3D adaptive identical to it. But then what I did, I right clicked, suppressed the first one. And then I just measured how far down we got before we lost power. And under the heights tab, I changed the top height from what it originally was to be in the model top with that distance that we felt like we had machined down to. So this is kind of a hacky way of doing kind of a rest machining. It keeps that adaptive tool path, it keeps it relatively safe, but obviously I didn't want to sit there for 10 minutes or, or any amount of time and machine through air again. Another 3D adaptive, this time with Tool 31, our quarter inch end mill. Just like in last week's Wednesday widget here, we're doing rest machining. So what that tool is doing is coming back in and picking up the areas where the shear hog couldn't get into because of the tight radius or the tight dimension along the floor. After that, a whole bunch of 2D contours just to give us a nice surface finish and a nice cleanup. We bumped up our feed per tooth. We used to really recommend one thou per tooth, but if you recall from our video on chip thinning, or if you head over to the new NYC CNC, click on speeds and feeds, the basics. We've got a really good video that walks through getting started with speeds and feeds, and it talks about starting recipes, chip thinning, horsepower, and what we've learned is we're getting equally as good surface finish, we're treating our tools better, and we're moving faster, and we're getting the parts done quicker by bumping that feed up to two thou per tooth. I knew you were gonna ask, two thou per tooth is .05 millimeters per tooth. I should know that one by heart by now. Time to flip our part. This is a tricky one to flip. So we've got a set of parallels. We're using our Heimer to find the top edge of those parallels. Why? Because I've got the coordinate system set right here. Looks like it's in no man's land. We're gonna do a separate Fusion Friday card to that here where we walk through how to get that coordinate system put right there. Next up, using our shear hog to face off and create this recess. So 
we had an idea. I like this product so much, we thought, let's see if we can make these for sale. And you know what was fun? Is it became a really good example of going through the process of developing and bringing a product to market. Now, this isn't gonna be the biggest product ever in the world, but it was fun. And it was using Fusion 360 to create this design, to create the tool pass. We made a circuit board for it. We ordered a batch of circuit boards. So, depending on interest from folks, let us know in the comments below. We were thinking about doing some more videos around this product and this project. How do you go from an idea to executing on that idea? How do you bring a product to market? Everything from sourcing the raw material, to the fixturing, to the code, to the process, to buying supplies, building out a bill of materials, starting to think about how to market that product. I thought this could be a pretty fun project to do that around. Again, let us know in the comments below. One of the things that we did on the version that for sale over at the Saunders Machine Works website is we got rid of this recessed plane because in the end, we didn't need it. We're having them laser engraved. It looks just as crisp. It's a little easier to make. We powder coated this one, but the ones for sale, we have anodized, which looks really nice. After that, another rest machining with tool 31 to clean up the corners, a horizontal to give us that nice tool path, that nice surface finish on the part. Quick spot. Coming back to do some very light cleanup of that lip and then edge brakes and engraving the text with the Lakeshore engraver tool. We love this tool. Makes a really nice crisp engraving without raising a burr. Flipping the part up on its side, picking our work coordinate system over here in the back left corner. Again, we'll go through this in the Fusion Friday on setting the work coordinate system on how to do the second, and in this case, third operation. Quick spot drill, drill, and notice we're drilling out the pockets as well, just to help give us a good lead-in move when we use a relatively small tool, one eighth of an inch, to do an adaptive and then a cleanup. The left-hand port is the USB Micro B charging port. If you buy one of the turnkey units or build your own, we've got a rechargeable battery, so it uses USB to recharge that battery. And the smaller guy here is the power switch. So we powder coated this one, why? Because it's so fun and easy to do in the home shop, but if you're gonna bring a product to market like this, anodizing is the way to go. Again, when we go through the video series on how to make, how we brought this product to market, we're gonna share all the pricing and all the background on this, but anodizing is really inexpensive, especially on a part like this. And finally, putting it all together. So much fun. It's why I got into this uh, machining and making products about 10 years ago. So I wanted to be able to build stuff like this. And the fact that we can do it in our home, we've got websites like Adafruit, resources like YouTube to help us get through these instructions. You've got hardware kits, Arduinos, adapters, LCD screens, it's just so, so cool. If you're interested in buying one of these, we're gonna offer three different versions. We've got the total bare bones kit. It's the aluminum housing, it's engraved, it is not anodized. We include the circuit board and we include the acrylic back. We've got a step up from that, which is the same thing, but it's got the anodized aluminum case that has been laser engraved for the imperializer name. And then finally, we're offering a turnkey, fully assembled, ready to use product. For those of you that are going to do the DIY version, head over to the NYC CNC website. We've got a link to the bill of materials, as well as a video and tutorial on walking you through how to put together your own imperializer. Last, but certainly not least, let's take a quick look at the Arduino code. We've got the code uploaded again to the NYC CNC website. It's very well commented, so take a look and go through the details. Here's the fun thing. Most of this is relatively simple. In fact, the math that we have to do is, as most folks remember from probably high school math class, is the conversion of 25.4. Where we spent a lot of time tweaking the code, and Ed did a great job on this, was the functionality of the device. Little things like when you push the decimal, having the cursor blink move over one to the right to show that you hit the decimal. And the functionality that I really wanted was, let's say we type in 0.85. Well, that happens to be in inches converting to millimeters, but I meant millimeters. When you flip the switch, it moves the 0.85, it stores that variable, and it moves it down into the millimeters and gives you that inch equivalent. I think this is awesome for, as a sort of a lean, quick to use device because it means I can start typing in as soon as I think of the number and if it happens to be in the wrong position, I can use that tactile switch to quickly flip it over. Unfortunately, because of that, it, the code does get a little bit more complicated when you've got to do things like carry the longer decimals and using float and moving those variables back and forth. It gets a little bit less fun to walk through. 
If you've ever used the LCD screen though, Adafruit has this wonderful liquid crystal library that comes with Arduino, very easy to use. We're setting up our keypad matrix and defining what numbers are where. So for instance, if you happen to use a different one that had these inverted, you could just update this array. And we've got some various sleep and wake uh, functions that help us preserve battery life. That way it goes to sleep, but also automatically wakes up. Feel free, go through the code, read the comments. We'd love to see you guys hack this, make it better, see what else you can do with it. Folks, thanks for watching. I hope you guys have a great holiday season. We love what we get to do. We love that we have such a wide fan base and a wide audience, and we're happy to make an effort, especially as we roll into 2018, to make sure all the videos that we're putting out are useful to both folks in the imperial world in the US, as well as overseas or the rest of the world with that funny metric system. Take care, see you soon.